So the mail is responding to some sort of sort of record like that. So you may have somehow superior to get in. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, I got both shots. Did you get your second one? Day, about one third of the day.
Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's why, how many people got infected? About 100 million. Yeah, we got through it. Call the Woodfin Town Board of Commissioners meeting to order this being Tuesday, January the 19th, 2021. Uh, first item will be the invocation. Uh, Jackie, would you do that for us, please? Yes. Dear Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for each person that is here. May we take this job serious, dear Father. May we make the right decision and represent our town. We ask you to be with us, be with each person. We ask this in thy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, the next item is uh, something that we're going to, you're going to be here in every meeting. It deals with the uh, Code of Ethics uh, for the state of North Carolina, and I'll just read this. In accordance with the Code of Ethics adopted by the board, all town commissioners have a duty to obey all applicable laws regarding official actions, to uphold the integrity and independence of the office, to avoid impropriety in the exercise of official duties, to faithfully perform the duties of the office and to conduct the affairs of the governing board in an open and public manner. If there's any item on the agenda, the outcome of which will have a direct, substantial, and readily identifiable financial impact for any board member, uh, please speak up now. Also, does any board member have a financial interest in any public contract coming before the board today? Okay, there being none, all board members have a duty and obligation to vote. Next item will be approval of the agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the agenda is submitted? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next item approval of the December 15th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next item is the public forum. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the limits of social distancing, no public attendance will be permitted. However, the public is invited to participate during the meeting via Zoom using the link HTTPS uh, colon slash slash zoom dot US slash uh, I slash 913573489444. And I think everybody, if anybody's on Zoom, you got it off of our website. So probably be on there now. Uh, and I'd like to read this before we have uh, public comment. <clears throat> Guests attending our meeting virtually tonight will have two opportunities to speak. First is the public comments portion of our agenda. And the second is a public hearing on a voluntary annexation request. To avoid confusion, everyone will be muted until it's their turn to speak. Please use Zoom's raise your hand feature to indicate that you wish to speak. Our moderator will call names one at a time. This is your invitation to speak. Uh, and do we have anyone wishing to speak to the board at this time? Our first comment is, I'm going to butcher this last name, Hannah Prigow. Okay, go ahead. We don't need it now. I'll ask her to unmute. Put her name again, please. Hannah Fergale, F E R G I E L E. And she's been asked to unmute so she can speak. Thank you. I apologize. It wasn't letting me unmute. So thank you for providing me access and for giving us an opportunity to speak tonight. Um, I, I first want to express concern that this Zoom meeting is limited to only 100 people. Um, I understand that's probably just a restriction of the Zoom license, but if there's a way to make these available during this time when we're all expressing um, some obvious interest in the development happening near Richmond Hill Park, it might be um, a really great thing to consider, at least another way to get input heard. Um, I personally am just concerned about this development, which I learned about after the holidays. Um, 
I'm a Buncombe County resident. I spend a lot of time at Richmond Hills and looking at the mapping and understanding the lack of public transparency there's been, I just would like to urge you to uh, reevaluate the timeline for this to allow for um, more time for impact studies on the river, on the ecology of the area and on the community that's gonna be most impacted by this. I appreciate the opportunity to speak and um, thank you. Do we have anyone else wishes to speak? Next week, Autumn Pittsman. Asking her to unmute. Hello, uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I also wanted to express my concern regarding the proposed development happening at River Bend. And um, my understanding is that the town of Woodfin is currently updating their zoning and revising many of their ordinances around developments. And uh, I would encourage and ask you all to um, put pause on approving any plans of this magnitude until those ordinances are complete. Whereas such things as financial impact and environmental impacts are included in such ordinances to take into consideration the entire community. Um, I'm also concerned about the proposed annexation of uh, a 10 plus plot of land <coughs> that is adjacent to the river and the Rolling Oaks neighborhood that um, is implemented into the development plans that is currently zoned R1. And I would discourage any sort of rezoning for such a parcel for a thing like a 250 room hotel as it is um, incongruous with the current neighborhood as they are all single family residential homes um, and a 250 room hotel in this plot of land is inappropriate. Um, and I hope that you guys will consider uh, the community at large before considering this proposal. Thank you. Do what? Give their address. Okay. Next will be Lindsay Denman. Asking her to unmute. You want to go ahead and ask them when you're talking to them to what their address is? I don't really talk to them. I'm just telling you the names. Oh, okay. I'll tell you my address. This is actually Ben Saylor, S-A-Y-L-O-R. I'm at 2 Union Street. I would echo Autumn's concerns about the rezoning for uh, particularly the hotel being inappropriate and not congruent with both the town of Woodfin and uh, the surrounding neighborhoods. Have you guys, uh, did that annexation vote happen or is that happening tonight? It's on tonight's agenda. Are you guys voting on the annexation tonight? Yes. It's okay. Yes. Well, I don't think the land should be rezoned. It's out of character for the town of Woodfin. It destroys the view shed of anyone looking at this land, which is all of Woodfin. We all stare down at the water and the river and you're asking to double nearly what we're increasing the population of Woodfin by 50%. Um, I don't think the tax revenue 1.6 million is gonna cover a 50% uh, increase in our population. I'm gonna leave the floor now, but I'm opposed to this project. I'm opposed to the rezoning. And I think it's a complete, um, it's just not the right way to go. And uh, your constituents are watching. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Lindsay Denman here. She's gonna leave a comment as well. She's at 101 Jonestown Road. Hey, 101 Jonestown Road, all the things he said, and mostly like for the influx of the population, not to mention how you're going to get the people there and the traffic and the bridge and so on and so forth. Like who's going to pay for the 15 more police officers and whatnot that you have to have? I would assume it would come from everyone that already lives here. So that's my property tax. And on your sign, it says Woodfin, 
for community matters, but nobody has really been notified of this. I don't feel like I matter in this community. I don't feel like you are even really playing fair or being honest in what you're saying. And aside from my personal opinions, financially I'm invested here. I own my house and I pay taxes. So I have every reason to be invested in this conversation. The end, passing it on. Thank you for your time. Please. Just for clarity, there is not a zoning request uh, related to this annexation. That will be a separate decision and separate process that comes later. So no zoning decision tonight uh, is being put before the board, only the consideration of an annexation. Next is Chris Bennett. Okay. <laughs> Chris, go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you for uh, setting this meeting up. Um, yeah. My main concern, honestly, I don't live in Woodfin proper. I live just outside the River Arts, but I use the Richmond Hill area as well as many families from the surrounding area to get away, to get into the woods. I ride my bike there at least two to three times a week. It's one way in, it's one way out. And you know, I think this, this whole proposal is just a giant finger in the eye to people who've chosen to make that area their homes, their they're modest homes. It's just people who live and work in Asheville and just try to put one foot in front of the other. And to have this developer coming up from Florida to build this property that makes little to no sense, that doesn't even fit in anywhere, <clears throat> excuse me, into the feeling of that neighborhood is just a real just slap in the face to the town of Woodfin and the people who live there, the town of Asheville. I've lived in Asheville now for 21 years and I've seen the growth for better or for worse. And uh, this is not a good thing. Um, those woods are pristine. They're old growth in some areas. And I really think it would just be a shame to drive along Riverside Drive and see these, these big, this, this, this development. It would just, it's just out of place, it's out of character. And it really should just stay down in Florida where it belongs. Uh, thank you for your time. Can we get your address? I forgot to ask for it. Oh, I live uh, at 12 Aiden Lane, Asheville, North Carolina. So I do not live in the Richmond Hill neighborhood, but I consider it, you know, it's almost really a part of Asheville if the way you, if you look at it. And it's a, it's a 10 minute bike ride from my house. And, uh, you know, so we're all vested in this together. We're all Buncombe County residents. And uh, yeah, this, is, this needs to be taken back to the drawing board. I don't care how many churches you offer to sweeten the pot. It just needs to go away or really have a really hard look taken at it again and scale down dramatically. Thank you. Okay. Have someone else? Nisha Bright. And if you give us your uh, name and address, please. Hello, my name is Nisha Wright. I live at 87 Green Oak Road, which is directly across from the Silver Line Park that is being constructed now. I am absolutely opposed to the new uh, development. I agree with everyone else's concerns. It is not conducive with this area and we've had enough growth. I mean, growth is okay, but this would be astronomical. My neighbors have been putting up with construction here for years as it is. And this would then, I mean, when would this end that we are surrounded by and dealing with construction on a constant basis? And this is not something that I feel is conducive to this area, this neighborhood. Um, and, and I mean, we did, as, uh, uh, as Chris said, we, we're modest, we have modest homes here. Most of us are working class people and we do not necessarily want our beautiful view of this river here ruined with all of this gentrification. So I am absolutely 100% opposed to this measure. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, next. Next is Ann Perry. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, <clears throat> I, I want to be sure that uh, there's adequate time given to the committee to 
uh, have a chance to assess all the impact that this development would have on the community, uh, including traffic, water quality, the economic impact that it will have, the impact on the river wave, taxes for the Woodfin residents, uh, and other social services that would be required with such a large scale development, raising the population upwards of 50%, um, and including the environmental impact in the water runoff uh, from such a large uh, development. And any uh, delay to the uh, voting on this should be taken into account and this should be delayed until uh, impact studies can be adequately done. Appreciate your opportunity to speak. We need a third. Can, we, can you give us your address, please? Yeah, I'm at 68 Graceland in Asheville. Okay, next. Next is Marnie Rogers. Hello, I'm actually here about the old home road project. So I'm wanting to know um, if that's gonna be on the last item on the agenda, because there are other people around here who can't get into the meeting and I'm trying to keep them apprised of what's going on. That's the last item. Okay, very good. But I do wanna chime in that I also find this ginormous project at Richmond Hill inappropriate. Thank you. Okay, who next, Mark? Next is Rebecca Robertson. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Screen's moving here. Hello. Hello. Can you give us your name and address, please? There we go. Yes, my name is Rebecca Robertson. My address is 24 Idlewild Cove. And I'm off of Baird Cove in Woodfin. And okay. I, I also uh, mirror everybody else's objections. I happen to be the co-chair of the City USA, which was founded here in Asheville. And so my biggest concern is the environmental impact of what this huge development will do, the water runoff, also how it will impact the uh, blue way and the green way that's already be that's approved and funded for Woodfin, that's going to be an incredible park. And this Richmond Hill development, uh, they're talking about building a bridge literally that will come out into the Greenway and affect it enormously. Another thing that's going to happen with the new development is, is light pollution which will affect all the pollinators. So I think it's gonna be an extreme environmental disaster, that new development in the steep slope situation. So I would at least ask that there is an environmental study conducted before approvals are made. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Next is Rebecca Robertson. That's who just spoke. I'm sorry. No, that was mine. Not... Never hand that. I'm sorry. Next is Jake Lurie. Hi, thank you. Um, I, want to talk to you. I am a, I'm a resident of Richmond Hill for Jet Court. 
Jake LaRue. My wife and I live here. We've been residents for eight years. It's actually our hopes to retire in this community. And uh, should this development go through, that will become an impossibility. Um, I'm from South Florida. I've watched the development go through South Florida since 1970. The place I used to fish with my father is now called the town of, of uh, Weston. Um, I don't wanna see that happen here. Um, I'm not naive enough to, to uh, think that development is not going to happen, but I don't wanna see it happen on this scale that fast and with this little regard for environmental impact or this little regard for the residents that are already here. Um, things that need to be considered are this bridge, the population increase, the impact on the people that live here, the impact on the environment, the impact on the river that already has a bunch of issues, right. uh, the roads and the traffic. Right. Today, I was driving home from work and I stopped on the side of the road while a mother and her daughter walked down Richmond Hill and three cars passed me on the other side. I did the math. If you added even 3,000 more cars a day to our neighborhood, that would be one car every eight seconds to our roads. This is a pedestrian friendly neighborhood. People walk their dogs here, children play here. A lot of our residents are over 60. There's a nursing home, a retirement home on our street. Angel House is here. Um, this, the bridge isn't a guaranteed. The, uh, the utility is going over the top of the river are a variance for a bridge in this area as well. There are so many things that are up in the air that if this is approved and this construction go, goes through, happen in this neighborhood, um, it'll change everything for all of our standards of living here. It, it, it alters everything about the Richmond Hill neighborhood. And um, please consider us. As I said, I know development's gonna happen. I know people are gonna live here. I know people are going to move here. I know people are going to build there, but there's zoning in place already for a reason. And everything about this development wants to change that and create variances and ask for something different than what's already been in place there. So consider why we put rules in place already. Um, and, and, uh, and consider the impact on the people that are here already and why we live here already and what makes this place what it is. And thank you for your time. Um, real quick. Um, my name is Dari Lane. Jake is my husband who just spoke. Um, I worked actually for the town of Woodfin for a short period of time. I covered for Jody for several months last year. Um, I know I see Ron Lunsford there. You may remember me. I just wanted to put a, a familiar face to this that you know we live here this is our hill we love all of our neighbors we all wave at each other and it's very small community and we enjoy it that way um to put uh, there's so many potholes on the road as it is and so many people that fly through this neighborhood that it would just the, the amount of traffic would just ruin what we have here and i thank everybody else who has spoken and shared how much we dislike this idea. Um, and I just want to say that I agree with most of what everybody else has already said against this project. Thank you. Next is Rusty Bryant. Yes, uh, th thank you very much. And I'll try to be brief. My address is 2405 Legacy Oaks Road. Uh, I come, I'm not a resident of Woodfin, but I've spent quite a bit of time in the past uh, measuring the water quality on the French Broad. And I'm concerned that the development of this steep area is going to uh, uh, badly impact uh, the runoff of the French Broad. You look at a map and you can see how hilly and, and, and deeply ravined uh, the, the Richmond Hill area is. Uh, there's a number of areas with 40%, 30% slopes. Uh, so, uh, it, it's going to represent uh, a real challenge uh, to keep the runoff to a minimum. And I think it, it's, uh, the, the project needs more study and, and uh, any decisions on it should be delayed until, uh, as so many people have said, the, 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 the large impact uh, of this thing can be evaluated. I mean, we're talking about uh, 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 hundreds of buildings, uh, as well as a requirement for a lot of new road structures. So all of that is certainly going to uh, trigger a, a lot of runoff, and and uh, it's it's going to uh, 
we're seeing the river really come back with all of the uh, river arts investment, uh, the, the rad tip project. And I would hate to see this project uh, uh, dump a lot of silt into the, into the river. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Sue McQueen. Yeah, hi, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak at this meeting. And like everyone else who's spoken about this situation, I am totally against any kind of development until there's further studies and research done on the impact that this will do on so many different levels. Whitman already has a problem with impact with Reynolds Mountain and, and Ventana and all these places. I live at 305 Weaverville in Woodfin and I see the impact when I see traffic that's just blocked up for two miles from the exit in either direction for hours after five o'clock. This is this is a situation that's ongoing because of the increase in population that we already have here in Woodfin. And to jump into this development so quickly without doing any kind of research and, and to see what the long-term impact is, I think is a huge mistake for this amazing town of Woodfin. Of the eight years I've lived in Western North Carolina, five have been here in Woodfin. And I expect change in development, but I also expect the good people of this town to take the time to make sure that what we do is good for everybody in this community. Thank you so much for your time. Next is Dan Hay. Hello, I'm a resident of Woodfin. My address is 23 Parkwood Avenue in Woodfin. Uh, I have concerns of runoff from from this project. I also feel that that the bridge across it is is another another impact to the river, and the neighborhood next door to it is small single family homes, and it's just not going to be part of Woodfin. It's not it's not the reason I moved here. I didn't move to Woodfin for large devel developments. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next is Vanessa King. Great, thank you for having me um, and listening to our concerns tonight. I live at 8 Thomas Street. It is uh, two houses from Richmond Hill Drive about a seven minute walk to the park. Um, as a resident, I already deal with a number of issues as my street is the crossover street. So I have a big concern with speeding and traffic increases. It seems our neighborhood is already at its carrying capacity for what it can handle. And this development will push it over by uh, 3000 cars as was stated. Um, we have car accidents on a regular basis. My mailbox has been taken out a number of times. So just as a resident, I have quite a lot of concerns about adding that many people to our neighborhood. Um, as a Richmond Park user, the increase of park goers over COVID has been a beautiful thing, but it also has uh, increased traffic in our neighborhood again and the wear and tear on the park itself. We deal with a number of cars being parked all the way up into our neighborhood because the parking lot for that park is too small for the amount of visitors. So I think that we'll deal with this on a much grander scale if you approve this development. But outside of being a resident, I work with uh, the Southeast major cities, including the city of Asheville and Buncombe County on sustainable development. And Woodfin um, does not seem to have done the preparation to be able to allow for a development of this size and its community. Uh, there's a lot of best practices out there to allow for um, development like this in a sustainable fashion. And so I would like to see more time be spent looking at how y'all can do that as a community. Um, if you're building a resilient community, this is the last thing you should do. I'm gonna give time back to the rest of the people. We have a number of folks on the call, but I am against this development. I'm opposed to rezoning this area. 
Um, I'm not against development in general. I just would like to see the work go in to make sure that it's the right scale for our community and right for the people. Um, there's a number of people that can't raise their hands. And so I'd like you guys to take note of that as well and make sure you get to their comments. And I think this is not an equitable way to get community input during COVID. A number of people do not have internet access or the ability to use Zoom. And your Zoom is limited to 100 participants, which it's maxed out this whole call for. So I ask for you to not only postpone voting tonight, but postpone voting for February 1st and give Woodfin the chance and our community the chance to get involved and be able to have their voices heard. Thank you for having us. Mike Brown. That's me. That's me. Um, I live at 244 Richmond Hill Drive, so I'm closely uh, impacted by this project. I just want to state my support, what everybody else said, and really reinforce the theme that the size and scope of this project is inappropriate for the parcel in question and for the town of Woodfin and this neighborhood. I've always known that that property was there, that it could be developed. Um, I understand the property owner has the right to do things, but the reason, the as uh, Jake said, the zoning's there for a reason. And the variance is what I would oppose. And the traffic has got to be taken into account. It's Think about this, the developer told the planning and zoning board it'd be an increase of 3000 cars per day. That's a falsehood. Um, if you have a development with 1,500 households, a 250 unit hotel and a retail center, you're looking at 10 to 15,000 cars a day minimum. And, and if the developer is gonna lie to the planning and zoning board about traffic impact, what else is going to happen? Thank you. AJ Gregson. Hello, thank you for allowing me to have this time. Uh, my wife was the second speaker. Uh, we both reside at 10 Robin Lane. Um, this property is the is a property that is directly adjacent to the property to be annexed. Um, I'd like to strongly disagree with this annexing due to the sole purpose of that they would like to build uh, that they would like to build build on this property. Um, I'm an avid user of Richmond Hill. I'm an avid disc golfer, mountain biker fisherman um, and kayaker. Um, I'm a big user of the Greenway. I'm, I'm really excited to see this wave park that you guys are putting in, um, but I'm really not excited to see my forest be clear cut and uh, death and destruction to animal habitat. Um, we have a very large number of turkeys that live in this neighborhood um, that we really enjoy seeing on the daily basis. So I oppose the development of Richmond Hill and I also oppose the annexation of this property. Thank you very much. Marilyn Ball. Thank you so much for allowing us to have this time to talk to you tonight. I live at 72 Lackey Lane, which is right off of Aiken Road. And if you're familiar with Aiken Road, uh, we lost, uh, uh, development battle uh, two years ago to build 296 apartments on a residential rural two lane road, uh, 30 acre healthy ecosystem with bear, deer, turkey habitat. So there's the destruction of that 30 comment. acres. Uh, We've been living <laughs> since May of last man. year of 2020. The destruction, if any of you have ever seen a forest, a healthy wetland forest be clear cut, it is devastating. The sound of the forest is horrifying. The destruction to the neighborhood is horrific. 
The traffic is already increasing with the trucks and the construction. And throughout the summer, last summer, we were subjected to our houses shaking to large equipment daily from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Uh, for, uh, the beeping, the, the sounds of the construction every single day while people were working remotely, while children were going to school remotely, while their homes were shaking. We have suffered runoff into homes that are being destroyed, literally. And I challenge you all to come out and look at Lackey, to look at Aiken Road and what has happened throughout this 296 apartment complex development. My neighbor's homes have been flooded. The developers have already been cited for mismanagement of uh, runoff. It is a disaster. The pollution, the habitat destruction has been horrifying. When you, when you take the scope of what has happened in this rural community with this 30 acre wetland forest and consider what will happen on the Richmond Hill area, it is the most destructive way that you can that you can destroy a community. And I've lived here since 1977. So I've seen a lot of changes and I understand development will happen. However, we were not allowed to, uh, to have environmental, there was no environmental studies done. The traffic studies, the reason they did 296 is because anything under 300 uh, units meant they did not have to do a traffic study. This is a two lane rural road. What you are proposing would be a absolute disaster. And I can tell you because we are living it here on Aiken. So come on out, take a look and see for yourself and consider what the scope will look like if this project goes forward. Thank you. David, i Yes, thank you for having me. I'm at 91 Richmond Hill Drive. I would just like to say that I do oppose the development and I feel as though um, the zoning is being taken advantage of and there's too many um, units for the size uh, and the space, the traffic in the neighborhood, which I've lived in for five years, has gotten steadily more. And with this, it would be tenfold or more. I mean, you guys are increasing your population so much so that the roads and neighborhood and everything else would change. We're small family homes and we would appreciate um, the consideration for us to push this back and study some more environmental impacts in order to see if this really is the best thing to do um, for the town of Woodfin and for the community at large. So I oppose this. Thank you very much for your time. Hannah Stewart. Hi there, my name is Hannah Stewart and I live at 3 West City View Drive in Woodfin. Um, I'm also in opposition of this development, and I agree with all the comments that have already been raised by my fellow community members. I'm particularly concerned about the environmental impacts of this development, especially the runoff that will impact the French Broad River and the um, Woodfin Riverside Park and the proposed Woodfin Wave. I live directly across the street from the Riverside Park, and as it is, it already floods multiple times a year and is starting to have some serious erosion issues. And I worry that a large scale development like this along the river could only increase those issues in our town infrastructure. I think there's a responsible way to develop this property and that 
the developers have not done enough to ensure that that happens and that this development um, needs more studies and we need more time to be able to digest those things to ensure that our town is responsibly developing this property. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm in opposition. Sheila Steinbeck. Steinbeck is not unmuted. We'll go to the next one on the list. Hazel Thornton. Uh, sorry, sorry, I I um, was okay. muted. <laughs> All back. right, so this is Shelley Steinbeck. Shelley. Yes, Shelley, and I was just actually saying, um, I've got your names in front of me and I, I do wish that I could put um, faces to the names. This is my first time meeting you. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time with this meeting because I know it's a long one for you. Uh, I'm me, Shelley you Stanback. Your address, and, please? Um, yes, I'm about ready to do that. And our educational organization is at 87 Richmond Hill Drive and it's called Ohm Sanctuary, and we have property in Woodfin. And I'm one of the very few uh, residents who had learned the day before Christmas about the notice for this proposed mega development on the Pearson tract, and uh, that the conditional hearing was scheduled um, by the town of Woodfin for January 4th, which was of course Monday, the weekend right after New Year's weekend. It was a really challenging holiday, and I know that this, many of us who witnessed all of this feel very <laughs> touched by the fact that um, we attempted, and we also know that Julie Mayfield, in a very friendly manner, reached out to you, Eric Hardy, to postpone that so people can get, could get back from holiday to even learn about this, and it was denied, and the only way we, this little small group of foot soldiers had was to hire an attorney and it was costly. We had to hire an attorney who had to then take it to you um, through the courts. And that's when it was scheduled for February 1st. And after personally witnessing this being scheduled through a holiday, I just have to say many of us are left with the only impression is that this was to suppress the public and our input and to be in favor of this Florida developer over your citizens. And so moving it to February 1st was something, but it equally sends a message, a similar message for the following reasons. There is a pandemic going on and many of the older individuals in the town of Woodfin do not have Zoom. We've talked to some of them. They were afraid to come to the doors and um, they're afraid to do public appearances while COVID's going on. And these citizens, they deserve a voice. And especially because of a development of this scope. I mean, you've got us on here today because this is a mega development. They have enough people that are gonna reside there with a church to have their own town. So let's wait for that to happen. And I would say moving this out six months could actually give the voice to some of the people that deserve to be heard. And many of the individual, individuals of Woodfin, as you can tell, this is very personal to me. I've worked hard for the surrounding cities and the city of Asheville and the impact in the river, all of the above. I've worked hard. And this developer can come in with negotiations with you all for a year and a half and wipe out decades. I'm in my 60s and I'm looking at all of you and I see the same. You know, we're older and there's a generation behind us that deserve better and more and want sustainability. And we deserve to give that to them. And so all of these Woodfin people, I just spoke to somebody the other day, they're just finding out about it. 
the citizens of Woodfin are just finding out about it and they deserve to have the time. And the other piece about this is those impact studies. You know, spending a year and a half with this developer and not requiring any kind of standards or studies and leaving it to the people to have to suddenly raise that kind of funds. You know, when the attorney told us how much it was gonna cost for some of them, our mouth dropped out. But I am so glad that a number of people, we're, we're talking a man, a man that couldn't afford much. And this just brings tears to my eyes still. This elderly man who lives on Richmond Hill with a number of us, pulled out a few dollars out of his pocket and said, I am so sorry, I am retired. I don't have more than this to give. That was an amazing amount of money that that man gave to us to be able to be heard by you. And these impact studies are important. They're important to the people because after this is all said and done, it is the people who are gonna be left bearing the burden that comes with this. And these burdens are not small. You have a number of people on here because this scope, this scope is huge. And I've compared it to, you know, at least, you know, Jack Cecil had the smarts to do Biltmore Park off of an interstate. This is off of our river. This is off of our community roads. And every single impact is heavy. And I'm not convinced that you're going to be benefiting by this. Not at all for many of the reasons a lot of the people said. And so we need time to raise those funds because you didn't require that from this developer. So the people are doing it. We're, we're willing to get out there and do this, to get the impact studies so we have good knowledge to go off of on just what this means to our community. And we deserve to have that right. And I'm asking you to push this off three to six months to give people the ability to come out of COVID and be there and be heard. These elderly, especially, don't for one minute think they know how to do Zoom. I struggle to find the raise your hand on here. And I would highly suggest you explain that better next time. The raise your hand feature was not clear. And then I'm gonna leave this with just one other thing you know i did tell it was mark hunt who i know has been really invested in the wave and the green space along with many other other of us and i you know and i did tell them i said you know i've been working with riverlink for all these years and i know that um i want to finish up just a piece of this piece with riverlink and link up some of those trails on the greenway you know, I've worked too long, I'm too old, I'm too old, I'm too old for this to have a, a Florida developer be able to wipe out our work. Because believe me, if you clog up these community roads with over, uh, and I, I agree, the numbers are just outrageous. You clog them up and there won't be access. And I'm just gonna leave you with the idea that you've got our attention. I'd like to help. I'd like to help by leaving you with the idea that Woodfin could go on the map for something bigger than what you're doing. It could go on the map for sustainable development because believe me, people are moving here. But the people that are moving here are younger than us and they actually want that green space. They want the green spaces and they wanna come to a town like the town of Woodfin that could do sustainable development where they balance out that sustainability with the forest and the ecosystems that come with that. And I truly do mean You've got our attention and let us help you. Thank you. Now we have Hazel Horton. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Can you yeah. hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Thank you for the uh, for the opportunity. I have three quick questions. Is there any way I can just get quick answers and and then make a comment? Like maybe uh, from the planning director or Eric Hardy? 
I want to know what this what this land is zoned presently. Mountain Village. Okay. It's, it's already uh, zoned. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's uh, zoned Mountain Village. Oh, thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, okay, so it's already zoned Mountain Village. Uh, is there? So that means. Does that mean that the Planning and Zoning Board is bound to approve a development that conforms to Mountain Village? That's not the way it works. Just a difficult question to answer. You want to respond to that? I said it's, it's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, if it, if a, if a project conforms to the mountain village without the necessity for a conditional use, then it does not go before the planning and zoning. I see. So what what are the chances of having a having an impact from from our discussion here? I echo everybody's objectives, uh, objections. Um, that have spoken before me, but I want to know how, how, what are we doing here? Are, are we going to have an impact at all if it's already zoned Mountain Village? The, the hearing tonight's on annexation, not that. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, the hearing, I, I understand that, and, and somehow this conversation has gotten away from what's on the agenda but since that's what we're discussing uh i wanted to ask ask the questions and um i think a lot of people around here i live in woodfin i live at four sunny ridge drive and a lot of people <coughs> get on these uh public forums and and express their uh worries and concerns <coughs> about development but it's after the fact if the land is already zoned, in this case, Mountain Village. That's what I'm seeing in Woodfin. Yes, ma'am, that's all we can say is that it's, been, it's, it's zoned Mountain Village and it has been zoned Mountain Village for quite a long time. I'm not quite sure how, many, how long it's been zoned that way. Uh, and uh, I mean, that's basically what I can tell you. Of course, certainly public opinion uh, is important to uh, our board to hear. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> um, and finally, who pays for that bridge? Do we know? Well, uh, let me put it to you this way that it will, uh, it, there's a bridge that is built and it will not be paid for by the citizens. Would Okay, uh, but but we don't know who pays for it. I I don't know whose jurisdiction that is in terms of which, you know, is it N North Carolina State or, uh, I I don't know. Well, uh, in the bridge. interest of, there is sorry, I'm sorry, you cut out. What was it? I said if there is a bridge built, then it would. Um, almost for sure be paid for by the developer. I do not think that the state of North Carolina would be paying for a bridge. Okay. Now, would they build that bridge before they build the project or after? That's just simply a question we, can answer, we cannot answer. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for your time and answers, e even though if they, even though they weren't to my liking. Next is Tracy de Blasio. All right. Um, so Tracy de Blasio, I am at 30 Robin Lane. I've received a notice on the 24th of December 
we live adjacent to where potentially building number one will be. As many people have said, this is a single family, single story residential area. So we have concerns. You know, when you look at other developers that have done these types of projects, um, you know, he could have put the townhouses and such on our property lines, but instead he wants to put a five story, uh, 250 unit hotel. That would be five times the size of the days in, in what is now zoned a residential neighborhood. It would put a four story apartment building with an unknown setback. So what we oppose is that this project moves forward because the builder has provided so little information. When I've asked how high is the building going to be, um, they don't know that. When I've asked how close is that building going to be or that driveway to my property lines, we don't know. So we don't have the adequate time or information to determine the impact on our property values um, or to see if it's even going to meet the other requirements. Without those 10 acres, it doesn't, I think it's over the density requirement with your old um, density of 17 per acres. This, the county town has already said six units per acre is what they want in the future. So we know that this is a really big project. We have very little information about the, ver the details of the project to determine if it really meets the standards of mountain village zoning, including not knowing what the height of the building is. I was told that the fire chief will come on the day of the meeting, February 1st, and then be able to decide if a $500 million project meets uh, fire codes or will be adequate in, our, in the community. Um, last part I would ask is we were on uh, reaching out to a lot of Woodfin community members. I have not found one in support of the project. They fall into three categories. One, they're despondent that they think that you don't listen to them and that you're trying to grow the community smart, that you just say yes to everything. Two, that there are a huge number of unaware people, which again is why I think the project of this size deserves more time, as Shelley and others have stated, for review uh, and, and community input, particularly people of Woodfin. And they're extremely concerned about the size of the project, having a 50% increase in the population, the strain that will put on the safety, the fire, the police, the schools, the water, the sewer, the environmental. Um, when is the bridge going to be built? We don't know any of those things, and yet we would go ahead and potentially approve the project without knowing if the bridge is going to be built first in order to bring those uh, construction materials over and get started, or if it's going to, you know, try to squeeze through Richmond Hill, which is really to be open for our armory um, and National Guard. So that's all I have. I don't know. My wife is here. She is also at 30 Robin Lane. Um, so we're both opposed to this project being moved forward without further study and much, much more information coming forth from the developer. Colin Willis. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. Thank you. This is Colin Willis. I live also at 4 Sunny Ridge Drive, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, first, has there been a lot of conversation about studies and about studies being done? And um, I think rightfully so. And I know from the only experience that I have uh, with how the studies are handled in the town of Woodfin is the ones that were done, the one that was done for 300 Bear Cove Road. I think the township doesn't have the obligation, you can answer that as part of the response, uh, to provide studies. I'm not sure about that, but I do know that in this particular case on 300 Bear Cove Road, the only study that I'm aware of that was done 
outside of some sewer stuff that was part of the developers team was a traffic study. And the traffic study was paid for by the developer, which is kind of like letting, in my opinion, the defense team, you know, run the investigation of a case. So I think in, studies to be practical need to be independent. And I think in the case of the Richmond Hill development, given the scale of this being 50% impact of, of growth of population, because it's the French broad, the impact extends far beyond the boundaries of Woodfin, that there ought to be independent studies performed on all of these uh, issues that individuals are bringing up. Will there be studies performed by the town of Woodfin on this project? Which question? Hello? We're done at a later date, I think. After the new year plan. We don't know if it's. Uh, Hello, did you hear my question? I think you can take the silence as the answer, sir. Does that mean, no, I don't know what that means. Is that a no or a yes? I don't think there are any independent studies. The town. Yeah. So no independent studies or, or studies per, uh, per, uh, comp, uh, commissioned by the town of Woodfin? Not that independent, no. Okay, thank you for that answer. I appreciate that. The second thing is, um, I think Vanessa brought this up a time before, but given that not all residents and citizens of Woodfin have been able to participate in this call um, because of your 100 person limit. And apparently there's, uh, to your own uh, accommodation, uh, putting out the sign up list that Jody's now organizing and making uh, meeting notifications uh, uh, available via email in advance, you're getting more obviously uh, interest and participation. So should this meeting and the votes that are taking place today be happening given that not all of your residents are able to be a part of this meeting? Legally, you mean? Feel like it's no, uh, legally, practically, morally, you know, I don't know. I mean, if not everybody can participate in something they want to participate in, are you hearing all the voices of the residents you serve? There's some emails, I would say we are. You say you are? I would think so, sir. We've received quite a few emails. Well, okay. Well, there's people that want to speak that, that can't because of the limitations. Thank you for your time. I appreciate um, your silence. <laughs> Thank you. I want to listen to Park Well, Park Well iPhone. Mr. Hermes Park Well. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Um, uh, I just want to first thank the commission. I I think you guys, the direction you're taking on the riverfront is extremely commendable. Um, and I should start by saying I live on South South French Broad, and I work as the French Broad River Keeper. Um, so the river through Woodfin is certainly a huge part of what we work on, and. I commend the commission for realizing the, the French Broad River through Woodfin really is the, the golden goose and the work you guys have put in to build the infrastructure for parks and the wave and the greenway is, um, is truly, I think, the right direction for the town. The water quality in the French Broad um, has been questionable for a hundred years. Uh, that's still the case today. The water through Asheville has problems with sedimentation, E. coli, and a huge contributor to these problems is stormwater runoff. 
uh, a development of this size sitting this close to the French Broad River will 100% have a, a dramatic negative impact on the water quality of the river, thereby impacting uh, the wave, the greenway, the crown jewel of Woodfin. Um, the size and scale and scope of this project is, is certainly concerning and considering how big this project is, um, I think it does warrant extra time. I don't think, um, I'm not one of those folks that don't think we, we're not gonna change and we're not gonna develop, but something this big is um, a game changer for the town of Woodfin, the Richmond Hill neighborhood. And, and we really wanna make sure we get something like this right. We wanna make sure people's voices are heard. We wanna make sure um, stormwater is controlled in the best way possible. We want to make sure traffic is under control. And so I really encourage you guys to um, carefully consider this. Um, take a little extra time to make sure folks' voices are heard and we get this right. I mean, I think tonight um, I see a lot of folks on the chat and by email saying they can't get into the meeting. And we want to make sure we hear everybody. We want to make sure we dot all our I's and cross all our T's before we venture off on a project this big. Um, I appreciate y'all's time. I appreciate you considering this and I appreciate your continued interest in protecting the French Broad River. Next is Tamara T. Moving on, uh, B. Langdorf. Yes, hi. Um, thank you. Uh, I live on um, 19 Terrace Court, which is right off of uh, Woodfin Avenue, uh, which would be the major thoroughfare from the freeway to come down to Silver Line Park and then cross this potential um, um, uh, bridge. And um, I'm opposed to the project because that that road that leads down to that silver park, Silver Line Park, um, it was um, it was under construction this summer. It's crumbling. It's very narrow, and it's falling on some houses. And if there's trucks coming through for construction, um, or a lot more traffic, that would be a disaster to the neighborhood. And I also second everything that everybody else has already said in terms of environmental impact. Thank you. Galen Wilcox. Yes, okay, unmuted there. Uh, yes, thank you for taking this, uh, this, uh, this call. Uh, I would like to invite all the members of the board or the commission uh, out to Richmond Hill from, you know, from Woodfin. It would only be a 10 minute drive uh, to go from one end to the other of Richmond Hill Drive and look at the intersection of Pearson Bridge Road and, and Richmond Hill Drive. It's a 170 degree intersection uh, that goes straight up or straight down, depending on which way you're going. It's, uh, it's extremely dangerous all the time. And to think of m multiplying the traffic going up and down that road by 10, uh, well, you can just imagine uh, the difficulties. Uh, also, I don't think it's been mentioned, uh, but there are two nursing homes and a uh, assisted living facility on top of Richmond Hill up, up here in this neighborhood. Uh, if we're talking about creating gridlock every morning and every afternoon, which this project, it looks to me like without a traffic study, I mean, just looking at it, it obviously would do. Uh, so we're talking about ambulances not being able to get through when, uh, because of the gridlock when now they do. Uh, also, 
I would like to say that this Zoom meeting uh, is in no way like a public hearing. It's, it's just uh, in something of this scope and this size that will have this kind of impact, uh, not having a real public hearing where people can actually make themselves heard and, and have an impact, uh, it's just totally different. I, you know, pictures on the screen is different from people in there talking to you. And unfortunately, that can't be done now. So I would at least ask for uh, uh, for a delay for like everybody else is talking so we can figure out, you know, some of the impacts here, which I mean, you all don't even know whether the bridge goes in first or last. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter much to you all, but it matters a whole lot to me and, and a lot of my neighbors. Uh, there's so much we don't know. Uh, so uh, I object to this. I object to the meeting, uh, the, the Zoom meeting that will be held uh, February 1st. That is not a public hearing or a public meeting or anywhere close to it. And uh, uh, the way they've gone about this, <laughs> uh, they aren't interested at all in community outreach. There's a section in, the, in their proposal where they talk about their commitment to the community. <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously that's a joke. Uh, there's no environmental review at all. Uh, and I object to this, um, uh, to even this forum here as, as being a public meeting. Uh, thank you for your time. Carolyn Spree, right? <coughs> Hi, um, thank you so much for allowing us to speak. Um, my husband and I own our home at 49, I mean 45 or not circle um, here in Asheville. And so what that means to us is these woods are our backyard where these apartment buildings would be right in our backyard, right on our property line. And we moved here from a really crowded metropolitan area really to retire and get away from having people right on top of us, tons of traffic, um, an inability to have any quiet or peace. That's why we left the place we lived before. That's why we chose this house is for the woods back here and the quiet and this park. And, um, I echo everything that everyone else has said. There is no regard for the environmental impact on just any of the facets of nature back here. The river, all the trees that would be cut down, all the animals that would lose their homes, the people that would come to this park to enjoy it, never mind the citizens who live here and call this place home. Um, there are two nursing homes, as someone said, there are at minimum three ambulances back here a week. There are so many elderly people back here and angel houses right here, ambulances multiple times a week. So with the gridlock traffic that is sure to be created with thousands of people back going in one way and one way out, one way in, because we don't know about this bridge or even who's paying for it, clearly, or if it's even coming in, if it's approved or whatever. Now we have all of this traffic coming through on this one pipeline. It is disastrous, the implications for the neighborhood on multiple levels. And as someone said, this is a neighborhood where people, we walk our dogs here. A lot of people walk their dogs here. Kids play in the street. This is a quiet, peaceful neighborhood, and we don't want it destroyed by some gargantuan, vulgar display of greed like this, this developer wants to come in and just destroy this landscape. So we are very, very vehemently opposed to this. So do you want to say anything? Nope, you said it all. Thank you for hearing us. And Brain. 
Thank you for giving us all an opportunity to, to speak and having the patience to, to stay with us this evening. I know this is becoming a long meeting for you guys. Uh, I live at 15 Morningstar Drive. I'm not in the city of Woodfin. However, I'm a financial supporter of the Blue Way and Green Way uh, project there. And I commend you guys for, for what you've invested in making that uh, happen. Uh, but that is something I'm particularly concerned about, uh, particularly hearing the the concerns that the Riverkeeper has about the potential pollution and runoff. You know, you're gonna spend a lot of money and the people of Woodfin are spending a lot of money creating a wonderful Blue Way Greenway. And then to potentially have that, you know, ruined with bridges and ruined with, with pollution in the water. I think it just is a, it's a risk that needs to be studied before you move forward with this annexation and the, the meeting uh, the waiver on the, on the first. And I would really encourage you to do that. I think the second thing I just want to point out is that, you know, there's, you're looking at uh, a huge increase in the population of Woodfin in a very short period of time if this development goes in as planned. And that's going to have some significant ramifications on city services, on cost, personnel required, and things like that. And I think it's important to take a step back and make sure you clearly understand what that impact is going to be and what the impact is on your other your current city residents before you move forward uh, with approving a project of this size and scope. And then lastly, I certainly, I know it probably wasn't your intention, but having the notice come out just before Christmas with a, a hearing uh, right after the, the holidays certainly gave the impression of a backroom deal or, or hiding things from the citizens of, of Woodfin and the public. And even if that wasn't your intent, I think it certainly comes across that way. So I think that's an, even another reason why it's important for the town of Woodfriend to take a step back, look at the impact of the traffic the, and the impact on your city and the residents and have plant time for adequate input before you make a decision that's gonna be this altering to the city and the landscape. Uh, I think it's just rushing ahead with this without doing that due diligence and doing the study and making sure it's the right thing for the city of Woodfin and the right thing for the citizens of Woodfin is very important to do. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Can I say something? I don't like the idea of him talking about a backroom deal. Is the way the timing was, we can't help it that it came right after or before Christmas. Judy Maddox. <clears throat> Hi, yes, I'm Judy Maddox. I'm at 15 Morningstar. And again, I'm not in Woodfin, but I am a donor to the Wave Park. Uh, I'm very invested and I'm very delighted that you all are very invested in the Wave Park. I'm understanding from the Riverkeeper um, that the Wave Park is really um, in question in jeopardy from pollution, from traffic, from bridge. Uh, and this is a huge um, a concern, uh, a exciting development future for, for Woodfin uh, to attract uh, wonderful um, people to be on the river and that you, you have every reason to want to keep the river clean and healthy that you want to protect the Silver Line Park. So I strongly, strongly urge and re respectfully request that you postpone this February 1st meeting so that there will be time, one, to keep you all safe. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing you kind of crowded together in a room. This is not a safe time for that and to allow the entire community to be able to come in person and present. So I strongly recommend that you postpone February 1st and do the studies that have been requested and certainly look at all the different impacts, the traffic, uh, the river, uh, the, the, um, the safety of, of all of your residents, the tax base, what that will mean for um, increasing your population. So please consider very seriously postponing this February 1st meeting and giving adequate time for all of these issues to, to be studied. Thank you very much. Charles Denault.
thank you for uh, taking uh, taking my comments. I'm Charles Denault. I live at or uh, my residence is at 19 Terrace Court, and uh, I just you know I agree with what everyone has said before. I you know the main points that I would like to emphasize are that in this period to be rushing ahead with a, such a large development that seems not to be in the character of Woodfin. Uh, that's one of the reasons we bought property in the town uh, because it was a small close knit community and to have this come in and just the disruptions and the possible potential environmental impacts, not to mention the bridge across that we don't even know when it's going in. I think these questions all need to be answered before this project gets green lighted. Thank you very much. Uh, Marnie Rogers. Hey, um, I have a question about timelines here. I know last year there was a moratorium on Mountain Village development. That was not particularly well publicized. I don't know what any of the outcomes of that were. And these uh, developer developers, are they uh, grandfathered in under the old conditions or will they be obligated to a new set of um, if the when the mountain village ordinance is revised, will they be obligated to the new ordinance? Uh, right now, the developer uh, is uh, has made his application prior to the act of war. So therefore, he's uh, traveling or he's pursuing his uh, project pursuant to the old ordinance. But you have acknowledged that the old ordinance is really poorly written and poorly conceived, and you're in the process of revising it, um, would you allow a project of this magnitude to proceed under a faulty document? It's not up to us to, to, to do that. The developer has made an application under an existing uh, ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Ben Spear. Uh, thank you very much for um, uh, taking our, our comments tonight. Uh, I really appreciate it. <clears throat> I live at 99 Richmond Hill Drive, right near the Richmond Hill Inn, um, or the Ohm Sanctuary. And like so many folks here tonight, um, I'm very concerned about the, <coughs> the project, in particular stormwater runoff um, and runoff during construction, as has been discussed. Um, I would encourage folks for a way of comparison. Uh, I'm a professor at Western Carolina University. I would you to take a look at some of the development um, that happened on the Millennial Campus in July of 2019, just as kind of an, as, an, of an, as an example where, you know, a non-local development developer, potentially with less experience, um, you know, working on slope comes in, we had really disastrous um, environmental impacts there, uh, which were, you know, um, perhaps avoidable. These are the kind of things that could, could happen in our backyard. I would, I would encourage folks to think about that. Um, Another issue again, and I agree, so many folks have made points about impacts on pollution, traffic, uh, economic impacts. Another one that I don't think I've heard tonight, um, you know, I'm, I'm an archeologist. I direct the Cherokee Studies Program at Western. I also have several years of experience working on archeological compliance for large developments. And while there are no state or federal laws that specifically require uh, an archeological survey in this area, you know, we're talking about 90 plus acres of land, all told, um, right there in the French Broad and a big bend in the French Broad. Uh, there well could be archaeological sites that get destroyed uh, by this development. Um, now, if the bridge happens, uh, that'll trigger a Section 106 review, which would result in probably you know, an archaeological survey that would be required for that. Uh, but that would only happen in the footprint of the bridge. Um, and, you know, I'm not uh, Pollyanna ish uh, development is going to happen in our region. I, I think in some ways that's a good thing, but it needs to be responsible development. And I raise the issue of archaeology just as one more uh, example, one more reason um, to allow more time for study 
so we really understand what all the impacts of this project will be, uh, environmental, social, economic, and cultural as well. Uh, thank you very much for the chance to come tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Jonah Thank you. Um, I, I have lived in Asheville for 24 years in West Asheville, 63 Dorchester Ave. But for 15 years, I've owned property, about eight acres on Vinewood Circle, which is adjacent to the park. Um, I've heard a lot of great points made. I won't echo the same things that I've heard others say better than I could. but. I definitely want to mention the traffic patterns. That neighborhood just can't support a doubling in size or more of the amount of traffic above and below on Riverside Drive and up the street. Um, I've been driving it for years and I think it'd be a shame if a huge development came in. Um, it would affect everybody, including new people who would be in the development themselves who don't know it until they would already arrive and find that out. The other thing that I want to mention, a um, few people have mentioned it here, there, there are a lot of residents in the neighborhood. I don't think there are hundreds of people who are non-residents who use the park, who love that park. It is, it is one of the most valuable green spaces in Asheville. It's only three miles from the center of downtown and it's just, it's irreplaceable. If there's 90 some odd acres next to that 180 acre Richmond Hill Park, I think its value would be far greater in some form of land trust or some form of conservation easement or something sustainable. I really would stress that you look at this development and see if it's the most valuable thing for that land in that neighborhood at this time when we have an uncertain future. And I think we could use more green space um, with smart, smart planning. I'm hopeful for an eco-education center on my eight acres. Um, I think I couldn't say anything more than that. Thank you for the time for, for hearing us. And yes, I think there are other people who wouldn't make it here tonight. Please give them an opportunity and stall for time. Thank you. Kelly Cowan. Hi, thank you. Um, just want to say that uh, the Board of Commissioners, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a Woodfin resident, 17 Gray River Run. Um, I'm definitely opposed to this project. Um, I do want to point out that uh, the board opened with their code of ethics. And uh, in summary, the county commissioners serve to meet the needs of their citizens. Throughout this meeting, I don't think one person has shown support for this project. So I just am asking the board of commissioners are you listening to your constituents? Moving on from there, um, obviously I echo a lot of the same uh, comments that uh, the speakers have made regarding environmental impact, the additional traffic. I do have a question and I'm curious why the moratorium was lifted on the Mountain Village District and not um, any other zoning district. We finished the reading. Um, can they change it? Why Mountain Village and not the other more clear in place? I think we're working on all of them. Yeah, we're working on all of them. Not just this particular one. Because so we're looking at all of our ordinances, and this was the one that we were able to get to um, and address the, the concerns that have been addressed to it, resulting in more trying to begin with. So I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of difficulty hearing you, but um, I believe you said that you're being you're revising the ordinances, and this was the first one that you could get to. Is that correct? That's the first one we did get to. Yes. Thank you. And so my question, uh, following that, would be: um, Why are you allowing or permitting development when you're currently revising your ordinances? Okay. Wouldn't it be in the best interest of the community for you to revise those ordinances and approve them before you uh, approve major developments like this? I think this board is taking advice from the public now rather than giving comments. So if you just limit to asking or describing your position, that would be most helpful. 
I'm just trying to understand um, what the process is. If you're currently revising the development ordinances, why are you allowing such a large development to, to move forward without um, first pressing pause? And again, listening to your constituents, every person has basically voiced that they oppose the project, that they are asking for um, a little bit more due diligence and are in, invested and concerned about their community. Well, the final, just, decision, the final decision is not made by this board, it's made by the planning and zoning board. Uh, and we are looking at our ordinances because occasionally, it's like with Buncombe County, the city of Asheville, there's a need to update them as, as things change. And it's been some time since ours were. And I'll uh, see if our attorney sitting here has any further comment he'd like to make on on your question. No, and, and it's you know, difficult to answer questions, frankly, because we're looking at all the ordinances all the time for the purposes of of modernizing them and, and uh, <laughs> doing what we believe is best for the community. Well, thank you. Um, I'm just asking again uh, for the commissioners to please listen to their constituents and their concerns. Um, and uh, it, ju it just seems like that the moratorium was lifted on Mountain Village. It just so happens that this project is also in that zoning designation, which kind of gives the green light to move forward without any more due diligence. Um, and I, furthermore, I just am curious how the town of Woodfin is going to address the people who cannot access the Zoom meeting. Every, every citizen uh, has a right to, uh, for instance, email the commissioners. Uh, if you look at the website, uh, everybody's email address is on there and they can, uh, citizens can address the uh, council in that fashion. Great, thank you for answering. Will the board be making a decision tonight? Hold it. The only, the, only, the only item on our agenda tonight is whether or not we will annex uh, that 10 acre parcel and not as to whether or not we are uh, whatever, not as to the zoning of that 10 acre parcel. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Emily? Hey everybody. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for all of their absolute amazing insight and intelligence and in all the things that they've said. I can't say any more um, other than the only extra concern that I have is for our community and the children and the schools. I don't think that I've heard anyone bring that up. I walk my kid up to the school when we were in school every single day. And the amount of traffic through these cut through roads that we have in Woodfin are going to be immense. We are not infrastructurally stable for this. We're not, we can't handle this. So until you guys can get some answers, we've done this before. I've been in meetings with uh, like this before. Until we can get some answers and we can get some studies, I am absolutely opposed because it is very clear that we do not have the information that we need to add this to our community. And all of us have worked very hard. Most of us have spent a lot of time here. I've been um living at 52 fine street for 10 years and i think we all have worked really hard in making this an incredible community and we need to make sure that you guys have our back and you're making the right decisions that's all i have to say Robert 
Yes, thank you for allowing us all to speak. And I really appreciate everything everybody's been saying and the way you guys are listening. Um, I grew up on a farm just outside of town and to the north of town. And I've owned property in Woodfin for more than 20 years. I've been in and out of this area since 1974 as a child. I've seen all the changes. I've seen more changes than most people on this call, except maybe you people in the, in the room there. Uh, I know most of you have been here a long, long time. And I know the devastation that's gonna happen with these, the roads through Richmond Hill and the side streets that were just mentioned all through Woodfin and the river without the proper studies, without the proper environmental studies, the traffic studies, the concern for our children, the wave park, all the other beautiful plans and improvements that we've got going on with Silverline Park, the French Broad River Academy. And all I am asking, all I'm asking is that you please postpone the February 1st hearing. Let us take time. I feel like we have the greatest opportunity ahead of us. We have Woodfin is a gem. This whole area is a wonderful gem. And I, I just think we have a chance for unity. And I think we could be a real example for the rest of the state, for other communities all around the United States. And uh, if we blow it, we don't get another chance. They're not making any more big parcels of land next to rivers. I thank everyone for listening to me. David Sharp. Thank you for listening to us. Um, I live at 200 Patton Mountain Road. I first came here in 1960 when I was two years old. Was raised here looking out at Reynolds Mountain. And I've seen the changes and lots of development. I've watched the French Broad River come to life in ways that it wasn't in the same way as I was a child. And I really want to caution to look at how we develop and to especially listen to the community. On this call tonight, I haven't heard one person supporting this plan as it exists. Um, your decision tonight is about annexing land. And annexing 10 acres that would be used for this project, I strongly would say that's not a good step to do tonight. There's a lot more information that needs to be found. There's more that's not known than is known. A project of this size, I don't think, personally, I don't think belongs on that river bend. I think that river is one of the most important commodities in the town of Woodfin and in this valley and to protect it. That river draws people to this area and to give that away for a development like this and to put it at risk really seems like you're, you're, you're putting the nature of what this town is, a development this size there on the river would change the nature of the whole town. If you want a development that size, I hope that it can be found in another place. But what needs to happen is give more time do the studies, listen to the people, listen to the people that are here on the call, listen to the numbers that aren't there, listen to the impact statements and drive up Richmond Hill Road. If you haven't driven up Richmond Hill Road, I worked on the Richmond Hill Inn up on the upper levels of that for much of the summer and drove up and down that road every day. And when I came to the bottom, 
and was turning out, it was always this moment of feeling a little bit in fear of, I think there's a gap, I think I can do this. Okay, I'm gonna gun it and make this turn. That's a road that is in no way ready to handle the type of traffic you're talking about putting on it. So I beg of you to please listen, please give more time <laughs> so that this type of decision can be made with the knowledge and the awareness and done in such a way that the community is behind whatever is being done there. Be it a park and building this type of complex somewhere else, I don't know, but I do know it needs more time. So thank you very, very much. Yes, Gordon Smith. Hey, y'all. Thanks. I appreciate y'all having a long night. I uh, did some of these myself when I served on Asheville City Council back in the day. Um, I am at 287 Bingham Road, uh, adjacent to the Richmond Hill neighborhood and the Bingham Heights neighborhood that Thomas Street connects these two. Um, and I, I'll keep it short. I am looking at what's going to be one of the biggest developments in Western North Carolina, if not the big, I don't know, is it the biggest? It's right up there, you know, um, that's being done without study, without a protracted and really careful deliberation while zoning is being revised with some timing that smells like shenanigans from some Florida developers that's going to impact the work that you've been doing for years on the Silver Line Park and the Blue Way that's 100% going to add pollution to the river and that's going to likely saddle Woodfin taxpayers with maintenance of that bridge. The developer will build it, but you know he's not going to hold on to it. He's not going to want to fix that thing down the road. We know. We know how this looks. Look at any developer who's built such a thing in the past, and you see what happens. So I don't know what your population is going to go up 30%, 50%. That's a moving target, I imagine. But the cost of the services that that population increase is gonna require is not gonna be paid for by the property taxes from this, pro from this project. If you add the bridge and uh, once you add everything up, anyway, there's a thousand ways this could be a disaster. And the only way you can make it not a disaster is just to slow down and just have a look at it. Because what you're looking at right now there is almost a 0% chance that this could go well. There's nothing right now that indicates that it can. So thank you for the time and thank you for your deliberation. I also understand that this goes to the planning and zoning and that you're not going to decide specifically on the project, but everyone in this room knows the power you hold in this community and the care that you have for it. And we're all here asking you to show up with that care for this community. Um, and if you do, then we'll throw a parade. Thank you. Dennis Wetzel. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I just unmuted. Uh, my, I live on 11 Green Oak Road, and I've been here for 20 years, and I grew up in Leicester. Uh, and 
I'm basing my comments based on the developments that I've seen on Reynolds and Baird, Reynolds Mountain and Baird Mountain. You know, Woodson could have required the developers of Baird Mountain maintain some undisturbed woodland on the areas that were not built upon, but instead the old growth forest was extracted. Now Baird Mountain is an eyesore and sterile. People don't visit this area to see big houses and lawns on mountains. They come here for the natural beauty and the fall colors. And it's apparent that the developer of Baird Mountain has no respect for the natural beauty of the area and has no apparent and has apparent disdain for the wildlife in this area. And I would like to know if on Baird Mountain and Reynolds Mountain, were there dry wells, a series of dry wells, or any type of basins built to collect the rainwater, excess rainwater that now runs down the mountain since the forest is gone? And I understand you're not taking, uh, you're not answering questions tonight, so thank you very much. Is that, is that everybody? Everyone for the Okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, to new business. First item is acceptance of donated funds for the Woodson Greenway Blue Way. Uh, Garrett here. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm here on behalf of Riverlink. Hi, Garrett. Hi, Garrett. Hey, we are here and honored uh, the, uh, as many of you know, Riverlink uh, promotes the environmental and economic vitality of the French Broad River. We are here tonight as a partner to the town of Woodfin in furthering the, where I am, uh, in furthering the Woodfin Greenway and Blueway project. And for the first time, we're honored to bring uh, ceremoniously, of course, tonight, uh, $35,414.47 to this project. Uh, we appreciate uh, the leadership of the mayor, the vice mayor, and the commissioners for carrying forward this important project to revitalize and transform uh, the riverfront in the town of Woodfin. And we also uh, want to thank the Friends of the Woodfin Greenway and Blue Way, which merged into Riverlink uh, the year before last about this time, this is about the second year, two years ago. Uh, I'd like to call out Mark Hunt and also Rick Lutovsky for the work that they did and also note uh, the contribution that Wilson Sims made to the raising of these funds. These funds are uh, for restricted for the purposes of the expansion of Riverside Park uh, for the purposes of the white water wave, which we believe will be a jewel of uh, the greenways, the blue way, uh, and the, the entire project with two new parks. So thank you. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you. Any questions or comments for Garrett before he gets off here? Thank you, Donald. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you, Garrett. <clears throat> Next item, consideration of a subdivision request, Old Home Road, and you've got the pin number, two pin numbers, and Mike Saunders, I think you're going to do this presentation. Yep. Uh, so this is a plan 20 unit subdivision at an unaddressed property on Old Home Road. It's identified by pin number 97317602 and five zeros. Uh, this property sits in our Mountain Village Zoning District. The subdivision is a right of use for this property. Uh, Planning and Zoning Board has accepted the plans and sent the project to the Board of Commissioners for their final approval. The process and timeline, the subdivision plat was submitted to the Plan Department. Planning Department accepted the plans. Schedule, we scheduled a meeting for Planning and Zoning Board. Planning and Zoning Board heard the initial request for the preliminary plat. Um, Planning and Zoning Board would have suggested any edits they wanted. Um, Planning and Zoning Board then recommend, recommends moving forward with the, this uh, subdivision to the commissioners for review. Um, next recommendations and steps is Planning and Zoning Board approve the preliminary, preliminary plat. 
their recommendation is to approve and let the developer move forward with the project. Um, right now, Board of Commissioners will vote on approval of preliminary plat. And we have Mike on uh, the um, Zoom right now, if you want him to speak. Questions or comments for Michael? Sorry, I was trying to find the unmute button. I'm terrible at this. Um, you know, we're we're so we're looking at at doing 20 homes on 10 acres, and I'm in agreement with everybody else on the call about responsible development, and hopefully this will be viewed as the type of responsible development that that folks would like moving forward. Thank you. Okay, you've heard the request. Do we have a motion to accept? So moved. Have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? I'll say aye on that and it's not in my back door. Like okay. the Next one is a public what? hearing on an annexation petition. Presenter, Adrian. So this is the public hearing for the 10 acre parcel um, off Richmond Hill Lane and, and Robin Lane across the French Broad River from Silverline Plastics. Uh, this public hearing is just for annexation of the parcel. Um, the zoning and the development of the parcel will be discussed at a later hearing should you decide to approve the annexation. Um, Mayor Dumont, I'd like to make a motion to suspend this vote on the annexation of the property located off Richmond Hill Drive until after the planning and zoning meeting has met. Okay, here's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next item, schedule a public hearing on an annexation agreement between the towns of Woodfin and Weaverville. And Eric's gonna present that. And basically our annexation agreement we've had for what, Eric, five years, 10 years? About 10 years or more. Oh, yeah, it expired yep. and we just need to renew it, but go ahead. Well, you just, you just stole my thunder. So that's, it. <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. Um, the an annexation agreement simply spells out if there's areas that might be contentious in the future or confusing. So it is uh, some, it's a, there's a map associated with that that we'll take a look at um, prior to or during the public hearing or at that point in time. And uh, we're working on that, we're working on the agreement and uh, it, the existing one has lapsed. Sounds good. So to, the action tonight is just to schedule the public hearing for February. Okay, you know the date that's going to be February 16th. February 17th, okay. 16th. 16th, okay. 16th? Yes, sir. I missed. But that's all right. I got you covered. Okay, so we'll have a public hearing on that annexation agreement February 16th or so whatever that date is. We need, need you all to vote on the scheduling. We don't have to vote on it. We just said it. Okay. All right. Uh, next time while you're up, schedule another public hearing on a voluntary non-contiguous annexation petition. This matter uh, relates to um, a matter that actually had come before this board before in 2019, uh, where there was a petition uh, for annexation. There was also the certificate of sufficiency, which is required for annexation decisions or prior to making those decisions. Public hearing was scheduled, but it was not conducted. And so now uh, we'd like to put that petition before the board. Having the petition before the board and the, the certificate of sufficiency, would like for you all to schedule that public hearing also for February 16th. What, what's that in reference to? This is in reference to the the, the Sourwood Properties LLC. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Sourwood Inn, yeah. 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 
whatever of, happened to it. Off of Elk Mountain Scenic Highway. Yeah. Mountain yep. Scenic Highway, yeah. It's a satellite annexation request. She's been wanting to do that for Good a while. Good place to eat. Yep, it is. I thought about that the other day and I wondered what happened to it. Yeah. Yeah, you got the inn up there plus 100 acres. So. Right, and so that would be also on February the 16th if you all decide to do that. Okay. 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 And while you're there. And while I'm here, the last item that I'll talk about tonight um, on the regular agenda is a budget amendment. Uh, the budget amendment actually accomplishes a couple of things. Um, both of them are staff related. First one is to increase the hiring rate for public works sanitation workers um, to $15 per hour um, as a hiring rate. And this particular budget amendment then will fund that for the remainder of the year. It also uh, seeks to uh, avoid wage compression for those other employees who are in that current um, job classification. So it increases those pay amounts by 225 per hour. And um, that's the first item there. We pay for that through the use of contingency funds in the administration's budget. So that's a zero impact to the budget overall. Um, the second matter is um, an appropriation increase um, to uh, hire a finance director for the town. Um, as you know, we're, we're assessing town staff and our capabilities, our capacity to manage the workload that's come in, also the compliance requirements, um, things that uh, the board has moved us in the right direction of park development, Park development and debt issuance also uh, lead to more complex transactions and recording of those transactions and compliance and reporting uh, requirements there as well. Um, the complexity of the accounting is increased quite a bit as well. So that was the, the purpose of what was driving us to request and to talk about the finance director. This action formalizes that um, decision to do so. Uh, we have started on the uh, recruitment effort and expect to um, have a decision shortly. Um, should you all approve the budget amendment and increase the uh, FTE count by one. This is an appropriation of fund balance um, to offset the cost of this. And the amount of that is for the remainder of this year is 42,360. All, both of these increases then will carry forward to next year and we'll, be, we'll start our base budget at a higher level. So we're requesting the board approve the budget amendment. Any questions for Eric from any of the board? Do we need to do anything to we need to make any kind of motion to create the new position for uh, a finance director? I think the, the budget <laughs> ordinance itself, the budget ordinance will suffice that because the budget ordinance, budget ordinance speci specifies what that increase is for. So I'll make a move that we do. Got a motion to have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Hire away, Gary. All right. Very good. Okay, next, before we get to department and administrators reports, I've got a couple of things that's not on the agenda, but I want to bring them up. <coughs> One of them, I got a request from uh, Sarah Gassaway for a speed hump on Jonestown Road, close to where they live down there. And they live in a, in a curve around the corner from you. But apparently there's a lot of people kind of hit it when they're coming down that hill. Yeah. And she'd ask it one be placed somewhere in that curve there. On Jonestown? Yeah. I guess Johnny go down there and talk to her and see where she thought about it. And she's also had a problem. She talked to me about that some hedges where people have trouble getting out somewhere on one side of the road yeah. there. So, I, but anyway. Mary, I got a complaint about those hedges too. Uh, I don't know if they're on private property on right away, but they're scratching cars plus a side. Yeah, I think uh, they stick out in the road there anyway. Uh, I guess there's something Johnny would have to, um, to address to see if they're on the right of way or uh, if they're private. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't scratched that red truck, have you? Yeah, that's what. 
Okay, Phil, uh, if you'll have somebody look at that, take care of that. Yep. Another thing, in the last couple of months, I've gotten several <coughs> complaints from people dealing with woods and water. And they can't get any response. Can't get anybody to answer the phone a lot of the times. We had one instance where a guy lived out at uh, towards Woodland Hills out there somewhere. What he did live in Woodland Hills. And they had worked on his water all night one night and said he'd be back on at five o'clock. And this was like three o'clock in the afternoon. Still didn't have any water. Couldn't get anybody to answer the phone. And I was up here, so I went up there. And there wasn't anybody up there. Hmm. Well, apparently after then I tried to get a hold of Joe Martin. Couldn't get him. <coughs> so then I called Sarah Gasway, left her a message. She did call me back. And by then, I, quite honest, I wasn't a happy camper dealing with them. I tried one up there and there wasn't anybody there. And it said clearly on the door office hours or such and such. Closed on Fridays. Well, I need some direction up there. And I would like for the board to look into the fact of maybe taking Woodfin water and bringing it under the town of Woodfin. I talked to Joe a little bit about what would be involved in it and see what's what. Because they've got some problems up there with management. They need some people to well, work. They, have, they won't answer the phone. I know that. I know about that. And that's just, you know, that's just, anyway, at this point, everybody up here, oh, and if, if you, if people call them and then on the computer answering machine they had, it had us listed somewhere towards the top of the list, call us, well, we don't know what's going on with the water department. But anyway, now then we've got it set up to where if somebody calls up here and they've got a problem with the water department, we're going to give them two numbers. One of them is Joe Martin's cell number, and one of them is Sarah Gasaway's cell number. <laughs> you know, people don't, a lot of people don't like to have their cell numbers give out, but that's what we're doing. You know, and it shouldn't come to that, but I'd like to explore a little bit further, see what would be involved in getting a general assembly to transfer woods and water. Town yeah. of Woodfin, because everybody thinks it belongs to us anyway, and we yeah, catch the heat for yeah. it. Some people think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I get the same thing. Yeah, that's the water they think it belongs to the town. I was in the meeting today with the Woodfin water, and supposedly, according to Miss Gasway, they've got that problem solved. Now, you know, I don't know, time will tell, but they've reworked their boom system. And they have it now that that they think they have it solved. I don't know. I'd cut your job out if you did, would you? I'm sorry. I said that'd cut your job out with being on the MSD, pointing to MSD. If we took the took the water. <laughs> well, not necessarily. We could still I know. Still have time. Yeah. I like waiting her. She did just kidding. Um I will have to say two years ago, even they were having problems with not wanting uh, to talk on the phone. It was like, I don't know, they, they, don't, they don't have a good system. They haven't for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, yeah. So Mayor, I don't you, think that's Mayor, a bad thing. Are you asking for an exploratory deal? Yeah, actually for an take. exploratory deal to look into it and see what's involved in it. And so look at it, yeah. See what what. So I don't think it hurts to look into it. Yeah, if it doesn't do anything, it shoots a shot over your bow. <laughs> okay, that's all I've got. So Eric, I'll turn it back over to you for some uh, department report. Taking them in the order that um, they're on the agenda. The ABC report comes first. Uh, Mr. Spradling is not able to join us tonight, the board chair. 
Um, they did meet last night, however. And um, is that right, Jody? They met last night. These minutes are from, so they approved. They, that's right, they approved their December meeting. I think they wait to send Makes sense. So they did meet last night, and uh, we do have from them a financial report, which you have on uh, uh, at your seats. And um, again, I think it's the similar pattern as we've seen as Mr. Spadling has reported over the last several months that sales are up, um, expenses are up, but um, net income is up uh, most significantly. So if you have any specific questions that I can relay to him and bring back to you, I'm happy to to get those. Cash on hand. Cash on hand. Please. Anything else? No, let's give this cash on hand. All right, I'll reach out and then let you all know what I learned. And uh, I'll defer to the chief. Good evening. Uh, before I start into uh, my written report, the first thing I'd like to do this evening is uh, play fashion model. Uh, the Woodfin Police Department, uh, in concurrence with the 50th, the upcoming 50th birthday for the town of Woodfin, uh, has gone with a new patch design, which was designed by our officers. Uh, so this will be a new permanent patch going forward till, you know, I guess the, the fancy strikes us to change it again, which should not be anytime soon, but the uh, new patch going forward. And also for 2021 and 2021 only, we will be wearing a Woodfin 50th anniversary or 50 year badge. Very cool. So this is again, just for this year. Uh, the officers have all these. Um, we are still in the process of getting uniforms uh, switched over. So you might see a mix of the old patch and the new patch for a little while. Uh, just because on January 1, we wanted to have those up and running, but we still had to have clothes on the guys when they got to work because it was a little cold. Yeah. So they still had jackets and shirts that they had to wear with the old patch. And we'll eventually get those switched over. But we're excited about this. You know, we're excited to celebrate 50 years here in Woodfin. And we want to do our part to show that. That's great. All right. Looking into our reports, the written reports, uh, December, the last month of 2020, uh, we can see that again, our, our total dispatch events were down from 2019. And that's the trend for departments throughout the area. Uh, when we look at annual reports this upcoming year, uh, calls for service are down. And we look for, you know, what are some of the, uh, the changes that we've uh, seen from COVID? And that's going to be one of them. You know, crashes are down, calls for service are down. Uh, generally, we, we, you know, had less uh, the proactive activities that we usually had because traffic was down. Uh, when we get into the other calls, and I haven't run those numbers yet, most of them seem to be about the same. We did not uh, see the large uh, increase in property crime that a lot of folks were predicting that would happen with COVID. And that's actually a good thing. I think that shows how our communities were able to kind of rally together, uh, even with some uh, government intervention so that folks weren't so desperately uh, financially burdened that they resorted to other means to, to make ends meet. Um, citations issued, again, 36 for uh, last year, I'm sorry, for 2020 as opposed to 2019. Uh, DWI arrests, um, Again, we're up, well, for last, I'm sorry, for last month, they seem to be the same, but when we look at our total from 2019 to 2020, and this will be in the upcoming annual report, uh, we saw an increase of almost 50% from 2020 from 2019. Uh, so we know that that, you know, obviously there's, uh, there's still drunk drivers out there and we're gonna do our best to find them. Uh, in other news, uh, ABC report has reminded me that we have appointed a new ABC officer. Uh, officer Colby Mahaffey will be taking on those duties. And so we're uh, going to try to get him more involved with the ABC board, making sure he's attending meetings and getting involved with them. Uh, but he's going to do some training for that first before we can get him in there. Uh, speaking of training, our uh, canine officer, 
Uh, we are looking for a full-time school for a replacement officer. However, he is in training today and tomorrow uh, with the Asheville Police Department and spending some time with them. So he's getting to work the dog and get that, uh, that familiarity. And hopefully soon we'll have him out on the road. Uh, in our hiring front, uh, we have one sergeant who is now in place. Uh, we're just waiting on paperwork to come back. Uh, and once we get that, we'll get him out on the road. Uh, and then the other sergeant who was selected from the, uh, the panel process, uh, we've received his, his application packet. Uh, we anticipate to get most of his background done this week bring him in next week for his uh, conditional offer of employment if everything goes well in his background and then get him in the door and going. And then our other other open positions, we have interviews lined up for those and and things are, uh, let me knock on some wood here, are actually looking good to get those spots filled. And let's see, what else do I have? That's about it, any questions for me? Questions or comments? Happy birthday. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We had two since last meeting. Oh, wow. I, I got to spend it at, at the ER with my wife. It was great. Oh. <laughs> it's a happy, happy birthday. All right. Well, thank you all. Okay, thank you. And y'all forgot to wish the mayor happy birthday, too. Um, yeah. Heard, yeah. <laughs> heard. <laughs> so moving on, um, and not to uh, take too much time, um, as you know, I'm obligated as the finance officer to provide budget um, and financial reports to the board. You have in your packets the line item detail, both on the revenue side of the budget and the expenditure side. Um, some highlights, um, looking at how you adopt the budget overall at the departmental level, um, nothing is looking problematic from my point of view. On the expenditure side, we are running a little ahead of uh, budget and where we'd like to see it with some maintenance of uh, vehicles and equipment, and uh, due to some aging fleet in especially uh, the Public Works Department. Eric, I know we talked about the other day, would you share with the board the fact that sales tax is a lot better than what people- I sure will. I sure will. There's uh, two pages back. Um, you'll see this slide if you're, if you are, I'm sorry, I didn't even orient you. I'm used to doing it this way. And whether you want to look, look at it there or not, sales tax is up significantly um, year over year. And also, but for the budget year, we've actually received the distribution from the state is nearly equivalent to what we budgeted for the whole year. Oh my God. And that's only for five months. It runs two months behind um, when, by the time it gets to the town. So we're five months in, we've met our budget already. So that gives you an indication that that's gonna be a real nice windfall for the town. Um, and uh, I think just it's a good indicator for that the economy is robust. Um, cash flow wise, we've received more revenues now than we've spent. So the tax revenue, the property tax revenue has started rolling in. And so we're in a very nice, um, we're, we're well into the black on that. Um, the property tax collection, um, what we've collected, what has been remitted to the tax office is about 80, a little less than 83% of what we budgeted. So we may have some problems there as we've been talking about that the sales tax uh, surplus will uh, be needed to cover on some of those. Um, the, one of the other items I wanted to talk with you about is the budget amendment that you all approved tonight, the two things. Um, Johnny, we did recruit for a solid waste um, sanitation maintenance worker and uh, had a, a very good response to it. He was very impressed and did several interviews in the last week and a half or so, and is ready to make a decision, a hiring decision there. So that's been a very positive um, uh, change in the hiring rate that's, that's really enabled that. Finance directors, I mentioned, um, we're recruiting currently. We have interviews scheduled this week, and hopefully we'll be making a job offer uh, sometime next week. And if things go well, mid-February, might be the time that we have finance director able to start with us. Um, so very excited about that. That's all I have on the financial side of the house. And I just have a few updates on the Greenway and Blueway. Um, let's see, we received the uh, transfer of donated funds. Um, so that's commenced now through Riverlink. It's a positive sign. Um, we will, we'd anticipated having a naming rights policy 
uh, ready for your consideration tonight from Riverlink. And that would be this board's decision it comes with a recommendation from Riverlink and their subcommittee. They've done a lot of work on that. And as you might expect, any type of policy uh, document requires a lot of, set, a lot of, set of uh, sets of eyes on it and to be sure that we are um, where we need to be with that too. So there's a little bit more work and fine tuning to go along with that, but I've seen the draft document and I think you all will be very pleased with what they've, they've been working on. So some very committed people working on that. Um, I also hoped this month to bring back to you um, a discussion item on a parks advisory committee um, with other things going on this past month. I've not had time to work on that. Um, so that will be February. We'll talk about that, a parks advisory committee. Construction at Silverline. So um, talk with Commissioner Lunsford earlier. We know that construction is underway. But specifically what's going on right now is the train platform. They've dropped materials. Um, so that will begin shortly. They're working on building permits. Um, so that is moving along as it should be. Talk with um, our construction administrator um, at Equinox. And we uh, have a, uh, on the permitting side, we have a FEMA approval pending there. So that's, that's, in the works. Um, I think there's some delays at state federal level that might hinder that or, or hamper that. And it might impact our timeline. We just don't know yet what that's going to look like. So that's uh, there's some little some warning signs there as far as the timeline is concerned. Not necessarily that the permit will be issued. Um, the committee meets again for construction meeting on the 26th of January. So that will come up next week. For Riverside Park and the Whitewater Wave, um, we had solicited um, submittals for design team, and uh, we have met as a selection committee and uh, had our first pass. We have additional follow-up and interviews with um, the uh, the submitters, and so we will uh, bring back a recommendation to this board to award a contract. Well, to the, the recommendation will be in the form of permission to negotiate the contract on that. That will come back next month. Um, Greenways, no major changes uh, since last, last month. So uh, still waiting for some uh, contract approvals through NCDOT and working with our partners at uh, Buncombe County Recreation Services. They are staying on top of that, but they're at the mercy of uh, DOT and their ability to process that request. That's the end of the reports and the end of the Greenway and Blueway discussion for tonight. Unless you have Question questions. or comment, Frere? Good report, Eric. Thank you. Okay, I think we need to have a closed session. Before we do that, have we got anything else to come before the board to, tonight? Okay, we have a motion that we close this meeting going to closed session. So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>